welcome to the recipe to success podcast in association with the tpss fund more information to follow so this week attention all foodies stop what you're doing sit down turn up the volume and brace yourself for a culinary ride because this week i get the opportunity to sit down with a michelin star chef who is also the executive chef at chinke at the five palm resort and trattoria by chinke at five jvc my mouth is watering already ladies and gentlemen welcome giuseppe pezzella Did I get that right? I uh, good morning everyone. <laughs> did I uh, did I did I get the Giuseppe Bazella correct? Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Also Cinque. Cinque. <laughs> yeah. Well I'm I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry no about worries, that. Yeah. Yeah, I tr- yeah, I tried exactly. my best. We 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 <laughs> were actually doing a little bit of a warm up uh, just to make sure that it's like I got everything que, correct. It's like a uh, quick. Yeah. Quick. Cinque. Uh, the, the the problem is is uh, being English we don't have the uh, the the vast vocabulary kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. So, how's it going? How's the restaurant? The restaurant is everything okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, we are running a good, uh, good business. Yeah. yeah, good, good. Well, for the listeners, I, uh, I'm currently. Most people will know this Five Palm Resort. Um, there's an amazing Italian restaurant that I didn't hear about until I came across Giuseppe's uh, concept, and I, uh, I actually came here for lunch, and it was probably one of the best meals I've had in the UAE to date. And you know, there's a lot of fine dining restaurants, but really this one did uh, did uh, blow me away. So, first of all, um, let's have a bit of an introduction. Like, who are you? What do you do? And then we can talk about uh, Cinque and and the concepts that you're creating here in the UAE. Okay. Um, thank you so much for uh, for your uh, uh, your experience and uh, um, in Cinque. So my name is Giuseppe. I come from uh, south of Italy, uh, Napoli, Naples. And uh, yeah, uh, I started my uh, my career uh, when I was like 14, 15 years old. I was uh, I was in the, like starting in the small uh, trattoria restaurant, and slowly, slowly, I uh, I discovered new uh, new restaurant like a modern cuisine, uh, traveling uh, from the, um, my place in uh, Napoli. And until uh, I was uh, like uh, 20, 21 years old, I started uh, my first experience in one star Michelin. Uh, it was in the in Amalfi Coast, in Positano. And um, uh, from that uh, restaurant, I was there for four years. And uh, after I still, I keep in the experience uh, rest Michelin star na- around uh, Italy. Yeah, and uh, how to or the uh, Italy? Okay, nice, nice. Yeah. So there's obviously, I mean, obviously we spoke about, you know, my time as a chef. So um, I'd love to kind of uncover that part when we when we go back to that. But first of all, obviously we're sitting in in Cinque, um, and for those that are checking out the the, the video on YouTube, uh, it's an amazing, amazingly designed uh, and built restaurant. Um, but first of all, how did how did this concept come around? So it was on 2017 when we started this concept. It was um, um, I'm come from uh, Amalfi Coast, yeah. So we uh, uh, we tried to to take the, the Amalfi Coast here in Dubai. So we started this concept uh, with uh, all the. First of all, with all the ideology on the, our product from Amalfi, south of Italy. Okay, so so it's effectively, the the concept is is from your hometown. Yes, exactly. Okay, so this artwork yeah. is this is this the Amalfi Coast? Or? Yes, it's the Amalfi Coast. It's exactly yeah, um, Positano. It's a small city in Amas in Amalfi yeah. Coast. Yeah. So yeah, um, Amalfi, where we are going, where we are getting the um, some fresh vegetables as well. Yeah. Uh, some fish, some yeah. anchovies, some uh, lemon, 
uh, some uh, some product from there they are very 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 uh, precious so it's very yeah. nice very especially of the lemon we are from the lemon we are producing our uh, ice cream our sorbet yeah. uh, we are getting some dish with that so yeah we are keeping taking the the, the product from uh, south italy for give a pure experience to the guest uh, so don't need to go in Italy. So then yeah. we can, <laughs> of course, they yeah. can come here in Cinque to experience. Yeah, yeah. It. I mean, I and I even said to you, didn't I, after the lunch? Uh, yeah. I was like, Italian <laughs> is not my cuisine. But yeah, honestly, I was like, I was, I was straight away. I was like, right, my girlfriend, bringing her back here, bringing my <laughs> friends here. Um, so you definitely changed my mindset on Italian food. But you've got all the cuisines in the world, right? Yes. You've got loads of places, and you've obviously travelled. Why pick the cuisine of your home? Yes, because um, I uh, I grew up with uh, uh, with a high tradition of uh, my place, you know, my, my father, my mom, my grandmother. So they, they give me this uh, this experience that we can only experience of uh, the tradition from traditional uh, traditional food to uh, the modern uh, uh, cuisine. Yeah, and um, yeah, I like to to uh, to show the. Uh, to my guest, uh, where I come from, where my product is it, and uh, what, what what is it in the South Italy and in Italy? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we can also I work at uh, here in Cinque. I can I work also with uh, different recipe uh, mixed uh, with uh, South and uh, Italy and uh, North and uh, yeah. some also. Uh, so you kind of like uh, you, you you like combine the cuisines and and reinvent something that's exactly yeah. that's quite modern. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm obviously in the introduction, I was like my mouth watering already. So let's get the mouth watering of the the people listening to this. So tell us a little bit about some of your favorite dishes on on the menu and kind of why they are and a bit about what what is the contents of those uh, recipes. So yeah, so I have a few dishes. It's my favorite. I have uh, the risotto with uh, prawns and uh, amalfi lemon. It's one of my uh, signature dish and favorite dish. And another one is the linguini uh, nerano. Okay. It's a uh, it's a uh, special pasta from uh, from South Costa Mava, from Amalfi Coast. Yeah. It's uh, two uh, my favorite dish because they are uh, very. Uh, very close to me, like a risotto. Even my grandmother was cooking this risotto with the prawns, fresh prawns, uh, taking from the um, fish market in the morning, the lemon from uh, my father. So uh, all these ingredients, you know, remember my uh, my uh, young uh, experience uh, with uh, my parents, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. more about, um, I suppose it's almost like kind of like, like like letting people experience what you experience as a exactly. child yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and and uh i feel like i feel i feel like especially with restaurants now you know and i think that's probably why i enjoyed the experience so much is because there's an identity behind it rather than just being uh, a cuisine that just does any old dish because of x y and z reason there's an actual purpose to this restaurant and and you real really feed that feel that sorry in the yeah. in the food um but you know, I can really understand, you know, from a chef's mindset, because like I said, I trained to be a chef, but um, how do you, like, like, at what time do you come up with these ideas? Because you obviously work a very demanding job. You're, you're the head chef here, um, and you've also got another restaurant, which we'll also talk about. Like, where does the creativity come in? I'm um, this. I mean, it's uh, it's just uh, like you. This job is uh, you need to like. It's like uh, your uh, your wife, you know. <laughs> it's like you 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 married something. You you bring with you. Uh, I mean, uh, until you can. Yeah. Uh, it's like that. So I discovered this uh, uh, this um, passion when I was uh, very young. So yeah. I'm still in, uh, keeping this passion. And uh, it's not easy because it's a very hard work for us. Yeah. So chef life is very complicated. So take ninety percent of your life. Yeah. And yeah, we keep in pushing it. Yeah. Do uh, showing a passion uh, to to guests and uh, cook uh, good food. Yeah. What's the What's the favorite part of your day? My favorite part is um, I mean when uh, 
when I start in the morning and I start receiving my products. So we're talking about uh, fresh fish, fresh vegetables. Yeah. So I'm very excited when I come in the morning and so the the supplier give me uh, bring the fresh seafood from uh, Italy. Yeah. And it's, for me, it's very uh, it's very nice to see uh, and outside of my country receiving the fish from my country. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very nice. And I mean, like, like just thinking out loud, uh, how long will it take? So you, you, you obviously you source these these. I assume from the fishermen in Italy, they supply to to here in Dubai. How long will it take for, for yeah. produce to get here? We are, we are connected actually almost every day. So um, thanks to my, to local supplier, they are uh, we are connected with uh, with them in Italy. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, we are like we we pre-order uh, one day, two days before. Yeah, uh, we receive so we make sure we receive the the, the, the fresh product on few days within in two, Dubai. Two yeah, to three days. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. And um, and in terms of like the people that you source, like how do you find these? The, do you have to go spend time there? I mean, obviously you're from there, but you've not lived there for a while. So, yeah. how do you how do you source these suppliers? So actually, in on 2018, we we experienced uh, thanks to my uh, owner. So uh, we experienced a, a trip in Italy. Yeah. We bring five uh, in Italy. We went to check products for uh, for Cinque. So we started from uh, south of uh, France for the Hoyser. We s- after that we went in Turin for the truffle. Yeah. From Turin we went in the south for the burrata, and then we reached until Sicily to where we are getting the the fresh tomato and basil and uh, all these fantastic product. Wow. So literally everything comes from Italy. Yes, mostly. Yeah. Wow. Wow, awesome. and uh, and I assume the uh, the lemons still come from your granddad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so okay, so we we sp- we spoke about um, Cinque a little bit. So let's talk about uh, your other restaurant, Trattoria uh, by Cinque. What's the difference? So a uh, difference of uh, Cinque. Cinque is more a uh, fine dining, and so we are more uh, like from tradition, a fusion from tradition uh, and modern cuisine. In Trattoria, uh, we start an, a really a new concept, so as a Trattoria, which is a very, uh, a very traditional uh, food, uh, where we are uh, doing the, um, the traditional recipe. Uh, um, it's all, all traditional dishes around Italy. Mm. Uh, of course, starting from the south uh, and from uh, Sicily, Naples, Rome, like we have like a traditional uh, cashew pepe or a traditional carbonara, uh, aubergine parmigiana is the, the, no, it's a very traditional recipe from the uh, from my grandmother and uh, yeah, yeah, it's a very it's very nice to to eat uh, something traditional outside of Italy, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But in terms of the difference between the two, is it is it you you'll get a very similar experience, or is there, what's the difference between the two restaurants between here at mm-hmm. Cinque and then we've also got Trattoria? What what would be the difference? The difference will be so there you will have a, a full uh, experience, a traditional experience, mm. and um, so t- very traditional food. Here in Cinque and uh, fine dining, so you will uh, you will experience like from Italian food and also a little bit of fusion food. So yeah. it's um, I was also in Japan, you know, I experienced uh, I was uh, for almost two months in Japan, yeah. so I had some experience of there. So I bring some uh, uh, some technique, some uh, some sources, yeah. uh, uh, especially on the fish. Like I'm trying to also to. To add some uh, Asian sauce. Yeah, cause yeah. Because the when I came for lunch, we had the the black cod. Yeah, and that was it? yeah, it's fantastic. If if I wish I just had like when I came for lunch, I wish I had like three stomachs in one, so I could just like try try yeah. everything. <laughs> um, okay, nice. So okay, so if I asked you then, so what's your favorite dish on the, the menu at Trattoria? Then what would it be? Oh, of course, I can say it's the the meatball. You know, it's the meatball for me. It's very uh, yeah. very important. Uh, I remember okay. my. My Sunday at home, uh, so my grandmother and my mother, they was cooking. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah okay nice so um and then even down to like the pasta you you source that from italy or you make it locally here like from scratch so 50 50 percent of the pasta we are making here so the fresh pasta but we are also buying some uh, dry pasta from uh, from Gragnano, which is in napoli south italy mm. uh, so we are working with these two kind of old pasta yeah okay nice and when you um, when you choose your suppliers is it all because i'm trying like in my mind when we talk about all the yeah. fishermen i'm for, i'm thinking about like you know these 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 men that are like in their late 40s 50s quite quite um traditional italians they they get on their small wooden boat they go out they fish they get their fish they come back or is it more on a mass production kind of level or is it literally like kind of like a really small boutique suppliers that you source from no, they are the my supplier. They are very so. Um, we are, um, actually, there yeah, some some uh, some of some of them. They are from my place, you know, from Napoli. Yeah. So and uh, yeah, it's nice to also have uh, somebody from your place in the outside of the country. Yeah. So we can uh, we can understand each other. Uh, what you're talking about the product and things. So yeah. Uh, Sometimes yeah, we all know we're talking about so with so many stuff and. Uh, yeah, it's nice to 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 speak with them because they are very nice and uh, showing uh, passion as well. Yeah, and and again, I think do you know what? Like with a lot of suppliers now, you get all these huge suppliers that supply on such a huge level that all the traditional guys that have the best produce they kind of get like like pushed out of the game. So to be able to kind of keep that element alive, um, again, just just shows testament to, to the food and, and as I say if you're coming to Dubai or you live in Dubai please make sure you um, you check out the restaurants um, but so we've covered the restaurants a little bit so one thing I want to talk about is is you obviously let, let's get to know yeah. you a little <laughs> bit better because you know again I know how tough it is to be a chef and you know when I got to that Michelin style level that that broke me and you know I'm completely open with the fact that I couldn't handle it so um, I want to learn I want to get into the, the the brains of Giuseppe and uh, and really understand what makes you tick so tell us about let's let's rewind all the way back okay. to, to Giuseppe as a, as, a, as a small boy growing up yeah <laughs> when, when did you first find your passion for food so uh, my uh, passion for, for food started very uh, very young so I was uh, exactly like uh, 15 16 years old mm. And uh, yeah, I discovered this passion on me, and uh, I start uh, discovering new new stuff uh, each uh, my experience I was going. Yeah, and um, my experience in the Michelin star restaurant uh, started at 21 years old uh, until uh, uh, 27. I ran in the around uh, two uh, three Michelin star restaurant. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, was a great experience to be there with them, so yeah. I experiencing a lot. What was it like, you, you, you say you got the first job when you were 14. Yeah. Did you, did you learn all your experience just working in restaurants, or did you actually go to culinary college, learn, I was, study? Yes, I was, uh, I was studying uh, in the culinary school, and uh, at the same time I was also uh, working. So thanks to my teacher, because you know, in the... In, uh, uh, in Italy, uh, most of the culinary teacher they, they have also the the, uh, the second job as a, a chef as well because yeah. of most of them they are chef going to be a teacher, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was invited by them to go work and the, like the weekend, you know, in Italy we work on Saturday and Sunday is our busy day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, it was very good. So from. Uh, from them we start uh, I start uh, to keep uh, more passion to have more passion and start my first uh, steps in the, yeah. in the kitchen you know what was it do you remember the first day you walked into a kitchen though like obviously at the tender age of 14 very naive very young yeah, yeah uh, of not, course. Re not really experienced much and then and then for those that haven't actually been into a kitchen you know it is very intimidating when yeah. you walk in and you know, all the everything's being cooked. People are talking to each other. Head chef shouting out dishes. Yeah. You know, everyone's just like, I, 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 I like to call it organized chaos. Um, <laughs> it's very organized, but it's chaotic. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> like, do you remember the first moment? Yeah, of, of course. I thought when I remember, I remember. It was a very busy kitchen, and I cannot forget. It was uh, like uh, around uh, maybe twenty-two uh, people in the kitchen. 
Yeah. Uh, it was super, super busy. And I was like uh, around, going around. Uh, my chef was going, Giuseppe, do this, do this. So it was uh, work everywhere. So, uh, you know, the first day I was a little bit scary. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was not easy. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, remember, I remember my first days. And, and I remember for my first ever service. And like just for, for some reason, I had this like overwhelming feeling of yeah. imposter syndrome where I was like, what are you doing here? You don't know anything. All these people are like experienced. <laughs> um, but then you slowly like, you, sl- you slowly get used to it. But, um, and what, what was that restaurant? What was it called? What was the name? Oh, the restaurant it was, uh, was in Naples. Uh, it was a very big restaurant actually with uh, uh, like 350, 400 covers. Yeah. So we was doing like three service, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. It was a very busy restaurant, so yeah, it was a great experience starting from this busy restaurant, you know. So they, they, they will show you uh, uh, the first, uh, I mean, the, what, what you will be for the, for the future uh, as a chef, you know. Yeah, mm. okay, nice. Nice and uh, and um, wh- I mean, in t- was it just like a traditional Italian restaurant? Yeah, or it was what? a traditional Italian restaurant, of course. Yeah, okay. we are called the traditional food and seafood restaurant. Nice, nice. And how long did you end up working there for? I worked it for one year. Okay, uh, just as a trainee. Yeah. So after uh, second year, I I got a good position in another restaurant. Yeah. So I, I was uh, I was uh, experiencing. You know, I was around uh, going around nonstop. Yeah, and how long did you end up studying for? I studied uh, culinary school for five years. Okay. I got uh, my diploma. Yeah. Uh, after that, I running. I didn't, I didn't stop until now. And yeah. I, I was around uh, all this restaurant and busy time uh, until I reached in Dubai in yeah. 2017. Uh, yeah, I'm yes. here. Now, um, when you was at culinary school, like... Um, when I was at culinary school, what I used to learn was we used to learn everything individually. So it wouldn't be together. I'd spend two weeks, say, for instance, in the pastry kitchen. Then I'd spend two weeks preparing like meats and so on, uh, vegetable sauces, soups, and then like being live in the kitchen. Um, like, how did how did your like culinary teaching go? Yes, um, actually, my uh, my school was very good. I'm very happy. So because there was uh, we was doing like uh, every week we was doing two service like a real service you go into the restaurant yeah. um, one time one we one uh, the one time for we for the service and one for the for the kitchen so because you know until the the third year so teacher make you uh, choose uh, what you want to do on service uh, yeah. on kitchen uh, and yeah that was a good experience you know I, because i experienced both of them so it's good because I, now i have a, a, a idea of, of, every, of, of everything, everything. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And what did you like the most? What 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 section did you like to work in when you was when you was training? Oh, of course, the kitchen. I preferred working uh, in the cold section, you know, because uh, yeah, I get always uh, this idea. Uh, I like the cold section because you can uh, create more uh, more more things. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And. Um, when um, you you obviously worked for a little while, but how long was it from the age of fourteen until you actually reached your first uh, Michelin starred restaurant? Was uh, like uh, fourteen? Was uh, like ten years? Okay. Yeah. Wow, ten years, and then you managed to finally break into to yeah, the Michelin yeah, yeah. star. And what was that like from an experience? Because it's a different level of you know. Again, you know, I, from from my experience, you know, I'd worked in restaurants for a very long time before I got to that level and you, there, there's just, there was just no comparison of the two there was just such a uh, huge huge gap in, in, yeah. in what was just what had to be done um, so to, like, what was the first restaurant that you worked at from a, from a Michelin star perspective and what was the experience like? Yeah it was uh, absolutely a completely different, uh, different uh, experience from traditional and uh, Michelin star restaurant you know uh, it's very uh, yeah, um, I would say it's uh, very stressful because you need to always be focused what you do. Yeah, uh, it's many hour, um, uh, many hour to uh, to spend your most of the, your day. You are in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's, uh, it's completely different. It's, it's very uh, you need to have a very uh, strong mind to stay uh, in the kitchen. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, when you when you entered the Michelin star, what what level were you? What level of chef? When I started as a CDP, a chef de partie. Yeah. Uh, I was in cold section. Yeah, I remember my first time I was there, and my first service uh, was very uh, difficult for me because, uh, as I said before, it's different from normal restaurants. So you need to be very, uh, uh, very careful what you do and yeah. to not miss any any anything because uh, you know there is always a, um, a big pressure uh, from the chef. Uh, it's a highly service. Yeah, and how was um, like how, how was that pressure like? Because again, like you say, like for those that don't understand, we want to try and immerse ourselves in that in that like Michelin style experience. So, um, how many hours were you working? What did you find was most stressful? Yes, like I was, uh, I was working uh, like a normal day it was like uh, from the sixteen <laughs> to seventeen hours per day. Yeah. So from was uh, early morning until night, no stop. Sometimes we even not time to have a lunch or dinner, so yeah. because uh, you know we have many things to do. Uh, all bring this on this uh, on because of uh, you need to have a passion. I mean, you need to like this job. Uh, if you have a passion and you really like this job, so you even you don't think about the hour and I mean what uh, what is around you. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. And um, when it, so. When you've when you've done those seventeen hour days and you're doing and then you have to go home, you know, and then you know some people are only awake for seventeen hours, yeah. let alone working seventeen hours. So, what would be the type of? Would you get days off? Like, would you do you have time off or did you have to work like straight through seven days a week? Like, no, we we got we can we get the uh, day off one day off per week, one day off per week. But there was I mean it was not enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was I mean? I can imagine at the beginning you would just sleep, right? Yeah, I was sleep because you know during the week uh, we just sleep. Uh, I mean, chef life, you know, we are sleeping very late, like three, four hours per night, maximum five hours. Yeah, uh, it's very, uh, very less sleep for us. So. Yeah, and um, like d- through that journey, because obviously you worked in this restaurant for how long? The first um, Michelin star. The one. first Michelin I worked for uh, four years. Four years. And in between that period, was there ever any doubt in your mind that, like, was this really the role that I wanted to do for the rest of yes, your life? Yes, there was one time, yeah, I was almost give up. So, because, you know, uh, uh, after many hours uh, stress and uh, so much pressure, so uh, yeah. I was uh, a little bit thinking, so should I change job? I'm still in the younger, so maybe I can find something better. But, but you know, uh, I was still in running... Uh, like no stop because I, as I told you, I have a very high passion on this job, uh, so it's part of my life now. So uh, it's like uh, I told you before, it's like a wife. So I married. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know, obviously that 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 point of going, okay, right, I'm still young, I could potentially change what I'm yeah. doing. How long did that last for? Was it just something that just happened one night? No, it was not more than one night. It was like uh, like a month. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like so a month. Make me thinking. Uh, so I was in very uh, very stress uh, stress it was a stress for a month for me that one. Yeah. So you were ba- not only were you um, having to work all these hours, concentrate. Yeah. You were also battling with sh- should I, shouldn't I do this? Yeah, because you know it was an, especially it was in the summertime where where we, in my place we are uh, in Amalfi because it was very busy. So uh, you from that you get so much pressure, so much stress. So that's why it was that month was very difficult for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And then and then that that month you turned around and was like, right, this is what I'm going to do. Exactly. Yeah. Have you have you had any moments since then where you've gone? Um, to be honest, no. Uh, more I experiencing around to me restaurant, the more I got uh, passionate from this job. So I'm still keeping uh, discovering new stuff. I'm very happy now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose now that obviously you're kind of a little bit more senior exactly, in the game, yeah. you have that time to kind of have the, a good team around you and and give yourself time to be a little bit more creative and go exactly. and understand and learn new things yeah. and, and learn new, and, and source new products and and stuff like that. But so you you worked in this restaurant for four years, then you went on and which restaurant are you based at? I went in the in, after that after the that restaurant I moved to another restaurant in North Italy. Okay. Uh, was two Michelin star. 
Ja. Also Villa Crispy. Um, that was my second master. Ja. Yeah. Uh, was a, another great experience there. So it was very nice. Ja. Yeah. What was the when you say there's a great experience? Just elaborate on that. Like what was the great experience? It was a great experience because it was uh, I was in North Italy and uh, so I was um, I discovered a new uh, a new new more products. Yeah. Um, I, uh, more friends from North Italy, so we got uh, many new stuff in the kitchen, uh, new items. Uh, was a difference of uh, my previously experience. So. Each restaurant they have a you know they have a different culture, different uh, tradition. Yeah. So yeah, you learn more things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, there's not even. I mean, again, we're covering the points of, you know, the fact that you work so many hours and yeah. the passion and so on. But what was it like? Have you ever had any instances where you've worked with chefs where there just hasn't been that synergy where you just you, you just don't get along? Hmm. Not, uh, not really. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, I never uh, get any, uh, I mean, any problem, any issue with uh, before with colleague yeah. and things. So there's yeah. always been a good synergy within yes, the kitchen. Yes, you've yes, worked yes, it in. was very good actually. I uh, you know because especially when you work many hours in the kitchen, you know, it becomes like family. Yeah. So you mean better because I was like a day maybe when I was down a little bit. So maybe you have a, so always you have some friends. Uh, They will ask you what happened, uh, you know. It's Someone that picks you back yeah, up. Yeah, because we're we becoming like a family, you know. Yeah. Uh, and um, we sleep uh, also in the same accommodation, so, you know, we have a, we spend most of the day together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and everyone just wants to have a pleasant experience. Yeah, and yeah. just Like you say, I think that's the important part is, you know, especially when you're experiencing those dark times, like, I suppose you're you're always in a kitchen full of, like other people in that situation female male and uh i'm i'm sure when you're going through those experiences you're not the only one that's that's had them because talking about the experience i think um one of my main reasons for leaving was i suffered from uh i would say it was never clinically proven i never went to see a doctor mm. but i just felt immensely depressed because like you say it's yeah. you work so many hours and it's not easy. and when it comes to the winter time you know and you go to work it's dark you leave work it's, it's dark. dark yeah that's a that's a it's an experience that not many people get to experience and one i would not wish on my worst enemy um so you've obviously worked immensely and long hard hours in in the michelin star world when did it become the opportunity where you actually got to contribute towards earning michelin stars I was uh, was on 2000, uh, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, where I got my opportunity uh, to to Michelin star restaurant. Okay. And what you the head chef there? Uh, I was uh, no, I was the sous chef. Okay. So I was running the restaurant the sous chef. Uh, effectively yeah, I mean yeah. I've worked in kitchens the sous chef is effectively the head chef. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, to be a uh, chef. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's true. So you have uh, you start your uh, high position, uh, many you got more stress, more. Uh, yeah. Uh, and um, and what what was the name of the restaurant? Uh, it was the name Quattro Passi. Okay, and that was in which part? It was of in the south of Italy, uh, Costa Amalfi. Yeah. Uh, where uh, where we we yeah where I spend uh, most of my uh, uh, like. Uh, time and the passion uh, because you know like, uh, working when uh, when you reach uh, as a sous chef in one two Michelin stars so you need yeah. to you need to be very uh, ready to to be there yeah and you uh, so you went and worked there uh, how many chefs worked in the kitchen it was around uh, 17 17 chefs 17 chefs yeah. okay and were you sous chef for a particular Uh, section or were you sous chef for the whole kitchen I, know, I, I was uh, I was a uh, running cold section but uh, uh, I was going around as well. Like during the service, uh, we was uh, somebody need help, so I was going around for main course, pasta, and dessert. So yeah, we, we was helping uh, almost everyone. Yeah, yeah. And um, when it comes to tell tell us about it. so how tell us the journey of actually getting a Michelin star. So somebody comes in, they dine, they rank your food. 
Is that how it goes? Yes, it's, uh, you know, when we start our service, uh, it's always uh, like, uh, it's excited, you know, because uh, we expected, uh, always we are attention, we expect many guys coming. Uh, yeah, of course, we, we always, we, we focus on the food, uh, we give, we'll try to give all, always uh, our best to yeah. the guys, you know, and yeah. And and to actually keep because I know that obviously it's, it's it's a thing that you have to maintain. It's not like you get a Michelin star and then that's it. You're Michelin star forever. You have people vi- revisit, rank your food, make sure that it's still at the same yeah, level. Yeah, of course you need to keep your uh, consistency, you know, to the food and uh, and the restaurant as well because yeah. it's not only the kitchen and the food. So I mean to keep a Michelin uh, star uh, longer, so you need to have um, everything. Uh, everything complete so you need to make sure the services go is okay the your wine list is all right so mm. kitchen uh, or food of course you could, that's the, the most important things of the restaurant yeah um, and so so whenever the whenever anyone from from michelin star came into the restaurant you were notified that they were coming Look, it's very complicated to understand when they come. I you know it's uh, so it's not like it's not like they let you know. They no, just of course th- they, they 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 like uh, I experienced it a few times, you know, because uh, I remember one one day they they was calling. We got a reservation uh, for two two packs to people. Yeah, at uh, and afternoon two o'clock, and after um, thirty minutes he called again. So he said, uh, "My wife doesn't feel good, so I will come alone." And yeah, there was a Michelin uh, inspector. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, after you, when he comes, so you can recognize him, so you can uh, easily recognize him. Do they always come as one person? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah sometimes uh, Sometimes uh, also two. Yeah. Uh, depends on uh, how you are busy as well. Yeah. You know, mostly you are busy, most, more is difficult to find them. Mm. But uh, when you have a small restaurants, small covers, so easy, very easy to find them. It's easy, yeah, because yeah. there's not many people that so dine many people don't, in don't Michelin star restaurants yeah. as one person. Exactly. Usually it's an experience. Exactly. So when you see one person, always you be scared, you know, you're going to check who is it, who is it the waiter is faster going there and see yeah. what's going on, you know. Yeah. And, and how is it ranked? Because obviously it's been such a long time since I was in that world, but how do they rank it now? Like, what makes a one Michelin star, what makes a two Michelin star? Um, so one Michelin star is from the chef and it's from the food and kitchen and, and everything. And the second Michelin star is uh, you start going the next level. So which is you need to have a, a big wine list selection. Um, you know, restaurant is very important, the, the vibes, the ambience and everything. Uh, until you reach on the third star Michelin, so in third star Michelin is uh, like you have uh, you have everything. So you have uh, you have good food, good service, good wine, good yeah. experience. So you have full experience. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And d- did you have any moments in your career where you weren't able to to kind of maintain that that level, and you had dropped down and had to, to work to come back up? Yes, it's, uh, as I said before, it's not easy to maintain uh, that kind of uh, pressure every day. You know, it's uh, yeah, of course, it's, there is many, many, many chefs and, uh, and colleagues. I know the experience they, they lost a, a Michelin star. So uh, I remember uh, two, three years ago, there was one of my colleagues in uh, South Italy. So he had some uh, the 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 the, uh, the hotel it, they closed for a while like a few months and then he lost two star Michelin. So was that during COVID? Uh, it's uh, yes. So it was uh, so it was not easy for him. It was very wow. Yeah. And that's tough circumstances. Exactly. As well. so it's very um, like to be able to do that during COVID. It's like come on, like everyone's had a, had it bad as it is. Let alone yeah. taking away their that what they work for every day. Um, Okay, nice. And then, how long did you did you work in in that restaurant for? Like, what, what, what? How old are we? Like, what, what? How many years ago are we talking? So, I my uh, um, from from twenty one to twenty seven, I ran an old Michelin star restaurant. Wow. Uh, yes. So from from twenty one, you started as a sous chef. Yes, 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 yes. Wow, that's 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 some fantastic like yeah, experience yeah. right there. And how old are you now? No, I'm thirty two. Thirty two. Okay. Yeah, thirty two years young. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here in Dubai. So yeah, I'm, I, 
Stepan next position mm. and how was it like obviously coming to the UAE is, is, a, is a big step for, for anyone um, yeah. did, had you been here before? no it was my first experience so in 2017 until now yeah and how was how did the how did the opportunity come around so it was uh yeah it was in 2017 the owner came in italy uh, to visit me and my previous restaurant yeah so and uh yeah we and then after we invited me to come in dubai and experience uh, a new uh, new concept yeah and and i mean I don't think anyone really. I mean, I remember when 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 the Five Hotel was being built, no one really understood like what it was about to bring to the UAE. Uh, and like many hotels, some open and and they don't do too well. So, what was it that really made you think, yeah, this is this is the right partner for me? Five Hotel is always uh, for me now. It's like. Uh one of um, the best hotel uh, uh, in Dubai because they have uh, so in the five you find uh, a full experience mm. no not only uh, not only one so you have uh, that's uh, the five uh, vibes we call you know it's the five uh, vibes yeah okay so because you have uh, you got um, so you have many experience uh, you have a beautiful view you have uh, many um, culinary uh, destination from uh, Italian, Chinese, Japanese, international, so yeah, so that's where we are, uh, I like it because they are always, uh, yeah, but your restaurant's the best, right? I mean, <laughs> 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 no, no, not, not only my restaurant, I mean, we have, uh, uh, my restaurant is where uh, I'm pushing. I'm. I'm always. Uh, you know, we are a comp- in this. I mean, this job. There is also a little competition. You know, of course. Yeah. So, and um, I mean, like, I, I wasn't even planning on asking this question, but now we're on the su- subject. Do you know the head chefs of all the other restaurants? Then? Yes, of course, of course. Mostly. Okay. And is that like a small little family as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, we have. Uh, also, they are all. Uh, yeah. uh, nice colleague. Uh, very nice guys. When you're when one of you is like rammed, you call them up and say, "Can I borrow a couple yeah. of chefs, please?" <laughs> Uh, it's always good to have a uh, year, as I said, it's a different from Italy because here you have a different international uh, colleague, you know. Yeah. Yeah, from uh, Chinese, from uh, Arabic, from uh, Indian. So you have a. Uh, it's in- all different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's also good for me because you can, uh, I can, uh, I can experience a different culture and uh, also a different ca- culinary culture, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay, so. And then when, when you came to open um, the brand, was the hotel already functioning or was it you were a part of the, the opening of the hotel? No, it was part of an uh, opening hotel. Okay. Our restaurant was in, still in, uh, in construction. So, yeah. so you must have really uh, had a lot of faith. Whatever the owner proposed to you, you must have seen a huge vision. Yeah, of course. I was excited you know, yeah. to, to, to work in the, in the Five Star Hotel in the, in the Palm. So uh, yeah. it's a very nice place, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's obviously become a bit of a public figure now in the UAE. And uh, one thing that I love is that a lot of people that I speak to that obviously know of him says about how much of a great person that he actually is. So uh, he must have, uh, he must have, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's created an absolute beast of a hotel. And uh, going back to what you said, I mean, obviously the five, you say being one of the best hotels in the UAE, I think it's probably up there with one of the best hotels in the world. Yes. Um, so he's done some fantastic uh, work there and obviously partnered with amazing chefs like yourself. But one thing that Dubai doesn't have is Michelin starred restaurants. Yes, exactly. Is there a reason for that? Well, to be honest, I don't know why. Because, you know, in Dubai, uh, I think they deserve a Michelin uh, uh, year in Dubai because. Uh, Food is very well uh, almost everywhere. Yeah. So we have an uh, international chef. Uh, we have a uh, good product. Some of the best chefs in the world. Yeah. yeah. We have a uh, fantastic product coming from around the world, from uh, Asian to Europe. Um, I don't know uh, why still uh, not here. Yeah. Mm. And and do you think that's something that that all the chefs here locally could like work towards? And because like when we obviously met for lunch. You was talking about how you got friends all over the world uh, that work in, in and you all almost kind of like talk to each other about different um, recipes and stuff. Is there a vision to try and bring a Michelin star to some of your brands? Because 
you know, obviously eating here, I know that it's up, you know, I've eaten at Michelin star restaurants before and I know for a fact mm. that the, what you're producing here is definitely that level. So is there, a, is it ever a dream to, to kind of bring that here? Yeah, of course. Of course. It's, uh, look, it's, uh, what time I, uh, I have in my kitchen, it's, uh, it's almost like a Michelin, uh, uh, star restaurant already, you know, because we, Come on, don't be so modest. No, Almost, really, because, it is. Um, Come on, the food's fa- <laughs> the food's fantastic. Honestly, I, uh, yeah. I give already also my guys. I give uh, I give them my experience from a Michelin star uh, restaurant and uh, mise en place. You know, how yeah. to stay in the kitchen, how to prepare food and things. So we are just waiting for them. So yeah. hopefully they will come next year. Yeah, oh, nice, nice. Now, when it comes to uh, your team, let's talk about the team that you've got within uh, both your restaurants, obviously mm-hmm. in Cinque and Trattoria. Um, t- talk to us about the team. How, how how many nationalities do you have? Is everyone Italian or do you have different? No, we have different nationality, of course. We okay. are uh, in the Middle East and uh, we have um, uh, people around the world, you know, from Italian, uh, Indians, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, yeah. and Asian. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And like, uh, they come into your restaurants knowing about Italian cuisine or they just have a good skill set and good experience and you know that you can take on the chef and, and help them be the kind of chef that you want them to be Look, some of them uh, some of them they come from an uh, Italian restaurant okay. and s- most of them they are uh, just good skills and and they're ready to learn you know and yeah, maybe also to to work with them and teach them a new new technique, new 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 stuff, Italian yeah. cuisine. You know? Yeah, because like you said, it's like uh, being a chef is like is like being married, right? So I'm sure the guys underneath you are like your children. Yeah, you're trying yeah, to yeah. nurture them. In <laughs> <laughs> yes, so true. It's so true. Yeah, some some of them that are with me since 2017. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can say uh, I can say they are cooking pasta uh, better. Uh, <laughs> of me now oh, so wow. you know, yeah 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 but that's a true testament to kind of like what you're doing to help them advance as chefs as well but being a good chef is one thing so i have two questions for you what makes a good chef so to be a chef is uh first you need to have uh, uh patience and uh and, and passion so these two i think is making to be a, a good chef Okay, and um, you can we can say also uh, knowledge of uh, of uh, products. Okay, yeah, nice. Okay, and then the other question I've got for you is: How do you find good chefs? In um, look in Dubai, we have a uh, we have a good uh, a good friendship with uh, most of the chef around uh, uh, restaurants. You know, I'm always connected with them. Yeah. So when I need somebody, you know, we just call them and say, uh, "Look, I need somebody for here. Uh, some position is open in my restaurant." You know, yeah, we are finding a chef uh, staff. Uh, uh, as I said before, you are helping each other yeah. also outside. Okay, okay, and then also, um, kind of like, what what's the next steps for you? Because obviously, you've got you've got Cinque here, you've got uh, Trattoria by Cinque. Do you have any plans to open new restaurants? Yes, we have a um, new project going on in 2022. We will start uh, five Zurich. Okay. So yeah, we are going Europe. Nice. Do you uh, need anyone to come with you and check it out? <laughs> no problem. I can come. Yeah, we could have course, recorded yeah. the podcast there. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Oh, so yeah, there we are going to do another excited project. Yeah. So. And what's that going to be? Have you already got like the menu designed and the name? Yeah, we are starting work on it. Yeah, we are on. We are on it. I can't wait to start also because there we have a good opportunity uh, to 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 work with the Michelin because you know and then in Zurich Michelin is there so I'm I'm excited to go there and hopefully we hopefully I can get my star Michelin there. Yeah, you fantastic, know, yeah. fantastic. Well, Giuseppe. Uh, it's uh, it's been it's been good to, for the last hour just trying to like get into the mind of uh, of a Michelin star chef, and really you know I respect you so much for just really I obviously I know firsthand what what you do just to to put pleasure on people's plates. So um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for that, and I'd also like to thank you for taking time out of your morning. Thank you so much um, to actually sit down and chat with me. But before we leave. Obviously, the podcast is called the Recipe to Success podcast. So I always ask my guests, 
what is the recipe to success? The recipe of uh, success is, uh, is to be always uh, ready to, uh, to, 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 uh, to do the difference and, uh, and, and to never give up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to, to keep always uh, yourself, uh, to push always. Okay, fantastic. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that just as much as I did. And you know what you'll even enjoy even more is if you actually get up right now, go to the phone and reserve some, a table here in the restaurant at either Trattoria or Cinque and, uh, and come and taste the food because trust me, it's absolutely amazing. So Giuseppe, thank you very thank much you for so joining much the again, podcast. Yeah. And we'll see you again.